Every single one of my task trackers is meant to be 100% customizable to fit your exact position. And that's because whatever works for me may or may not work exactly the same way for you. And that's what makes my spreadsheet a lot better than some of these other platforms that are pre-built because you can edit it to however you want. For example, let's say you want to add new columns or if you want to change the drop down options or if you want to add an extra calendar to see this month and next month scheduled tasks or if you want to rename your tabs, or if you want to have anything marked as unable to start, also move to the part tab. You can make pretty much any edits you want. You just need to do a little bit of tweaking to the spreadsheet. So in this video, I'm going to show you a couple of different examples of how to customize your spreadsheet. And the same concept kind of applies to everything. So by the end of the video, you should be able to mix and match the different concepts to tweak it to however you want. Now, before you make any customizations to the spreadsheet, you need to understand how it works. In column C, which is the third column, this is where it contains all of our triggers. So whenever I mark a task as pending, for example, you'll see a timestamp appear over here under task started. And when I mark a task as done, a timestamp will appear under task completed and it will move to the bottom of the done tab. So that's important to understand because a lot of our automation is built off of exactly that. Another thing to note is that there are multiple tabs in play. So we have our task list. Then we also have a part task tab. So if you add a new column or anything like that, you need to make sure that you add a new column in all of your different tabs. We also have a combined list and this stacks everything that is on your task list on top of everything that is on your done list. And on top of that, it removes all of the blank cells, so that way it's stacked right on top of each other. We have a recurring task list, and this is where you put all of your recurring tasks, and this will automatically be added to the task list. Now, one thing to note is this is bringing in the type through the task focus. So if you add anything between those two on your task list, you'll need to add another column on your recurring tasks as well. And if you do add another column, you need to make sure that you adjust the automation code as well. And I'll show you that in a second. Everything gets moved to this done tab. So if you add another column to your task list, you need to make sure you add another column to your done tab as well. That way everything is aligned properly. Visualizations should automatically update. These are all built off of the visualizations worksheet. So depending on what you do, you may need to update this by just clicking on edit and change the pivot table details, but pretty much everything should just update automatically. Then finally, we have the task list, and this is the type, the task, the status, the priority, and the date. So if you add anything into the middle, you may need to adjust this as well to make sure everything is included. And I'll also show you how to insert another column in here in case you want to add something, for example, an employee name or whatever else. Now, before we get started, we're going to save the current version. So I'm going to go to File, Version History, Name Current Version. I'm going to say Before Edits, and I'll save that. So now whenever we make different edits, I can always go to File, Version History, see version history, and I can select before edits, and I can restore that if I make mistakes and I can't recover it. This is just a baseline, so that way you can make different incremental upgrades, and you can name as many as you want. But if you mess up something, you can't get it to work again, you can simply restore the before edits, and you know it will work. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is update a dropdown. So let's say you want to update done to completed. I'm going to click on edit and then put completed, then I'll hit done. Now, if I change it to completed, nothing happens. And that's because done is a trigger word that triggers the automation. Since we changed it, we need to update the code. But before we do that, we need to update the conditional formatting. So I'm gonna click on column B, go to format, conditional formatting. I'll click on the one that says done and change that to completed. Now you can see that the formatting is crossed out in gray and that's because it's completed. Now over here on the dashboard as well, we have the same kind of thing. So I'll go to format, conditional formatting, find the one that says done and change that to completed. And now any tasks that are completed will be automatically grayed out just like that. Now you can see right here, it says completed. Don't worry about that. Once it clears from the list, you won't have to worry about formatting that. We're also going to go to our recurring task and update that here. So under progress slash status, we'll click on edit and we'll update done to completed. Hit done and hit okay. All right, so now let's go to the automation code. So we'll go to extensions, app script, and you can see right here on our task list in column three, if it's listed as done, then we wanna add a timestamp in row 12. And in row 12, that's over here in task completed. So I'm gonna simply change this to completed. And if I scroll down a little bit, you can see right here, we have two things that say done. Now the first one in column three, it's going to look up for the value done. And that's the value that we just changed to completed. So I'm gonna change that to completed. The second one, this is actually the sheet name. So if I look at target sheet, we want that to remain done. And that's because over here on our tracker, the name of the sheet is still done. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. I'll change it back to pending. And now if I mark it as complete, it should clear from this list and move to the bottom of your done tab. Now, if you've been using the tracker and you wanna update everything you've done before this to completed, you're more than welcome to. It's really up to you. Now, if you wanna update one of these, you're more than welcome to. Let's say you wanna add a new one. You can add that to whatever you wanna do. And once you select that, let's go ahead and mark that as completed. It will move from this list to the bottom of the done tab. 
Now it should show up on this list, but if you go to your visualization tab, it may or may not show up on your visualizations. If it doesn't, you can go to edit chart and you'll just need to make sure that this is extended all the way past the row it needs to be. So for example, A66. So since it goes all the way down to A66, anything that's within this range is going to be included. So it should be good to go there. All right, let's say we want to reorganize the rows. So instead of the deadline being here, we want the deadline to be right over here. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is cut the zero because I want the formula to stay over here. And the biggest thing with this is make sure it's cut, not copy. Cut will maintain referring to L to L on the done tab. If you copied instead, it's going to shift over four columns instead. So it's going to refer to the wrong column. So make sure you copy it instead of cut to preserve the formula. I'm gonna click on B1, click the little dropper, and simply select the same color that we have before. So that way it's nice and clean. Now, if I were to select completed, nothing's gonna happen. And that's because it's now pointing to the wrong row. So all we need to do here is we need to add one to every single one of these options. So, so I'll start at the top. And now instead of pointing to column three, we need to point to column four because that's where our triggers are now held. Since we didn't add anything, we only reorganize things, the timestamp will appear in the same column. If you wanna make sure, you can go back to your tracker and see exactly where task completed is and then count out the columns. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So everything's good. If you were to add a new column beforehand, you'll need to add one to this as well. But since we're simply reorganizing, we don't need to. Now, originally the task details was in column two. Since the date is before the task list, we need to change this from column two to column three. And then same thing down here. Now the trigger is going to be in column four for every single one of these. So now everything's good to go there. But before we run it, we need to update everything else. So for example, the park tab, all we need to do is drag this over to be in front of the task list. Combine list, we need to drag this over to be in front of the task list. Now you can see right here we have an error, but before we fix that, I'm gonna go ahead to our recurring tab and change the deadline to before task list. And before the done tab, change the deadline to before task list. We'll fix this here in a second as well. All right, now going back to the combined list, you can see that now the formula is working. And that's why it's important to not prematurely adjust things because the issue was simply that the done tab was not updated, but the task list was. So everything's good to go right there. Now, since we didn't add any new columns, all we needed to do with the recurring task is just update the deadline to the new area. So nothing is needed there. So now on the dashboard, in cell A7, we have our formula that prioritizes everything for you. And since everything was shifted, now we need to adjust where everything was. But luckily the query formula is super easy to use so we can simply take the B because column B is where the new deadline is. Remember we're going to delete that and then after E where it originally was because it was originally in column E, we're gonna put B. And we're gonna do the same thing over here on the second part of the formula. So after E, put B. And now originally since the deadline was in column E, we wanna change this to column B. So where the deadline is not null, that'll be the first part of the equation. And then here we want for column B where it is null then we'll change B to column C and press enter. So now it'll work properly. So what this is saying is where B, the deadline, is not null. So it's only going to include anything that has a date. And we're gonna stack that on top of anything that doesn't have a date, but column C, which is our task details, is not null, meaning that there is a task. So that way it avoids having a bunch of blanks. So everything is good to go there. And this looks very complicated, but essentially you just need to make sure that the new column, if you add a new column, is within this range. And then you can order everything based off of exactly what's there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put pending and then put completed. And now this should move from this list and go to the bottom of the done tab. And the bottom of the done tab, everything should align exactly as it should with this new location of the deadline. So it's not super hard, you just need to know what you're doing. All right, now let's say instead of having done, we want to have the name be completed tasks. I can go back to app script and then under timestamp, if I scroll down here, instead of having done, I can put completed tasks. And this is down here in the move done section. So now I can go ahead and save this. And now if I mark a new task as done, it'll move from the task list to the bottom of the completed task list. By default, unable to start stays on this list. And it will simply move to the bottom of the list whenever you sort it from A to Z. But let's say, kind of similar to how you can mark a progress as part and it moves to the part tab, you want that to be the trigger as well. So here's what you'll do. You'll, you'll go to the app script code and then we're going to find the parked one. We'll copy that, press enter, and then we're gonna paste that code again. Now, the new location is not in column four, it's in column five, and that's because it's in column E that we want to look at. So we want to look at one, two, three, four, five. So that's why it's in column five. I'm going to copy the exact spelling to make sure there's no space issues or anything like that. Go back here, instead of part, I'm going to paste that value. And I just realized I did not change this to a five, so I need to change this to a five. 
then I'll save that. I'm gonna change this to follow up and then change it back to unable to start. And once I do that, it should clear from this list and move to the bottom of the part tab. Now, in order to get this back, we should be able to click it as ready. And now it will move back to my task list. All right, let's say to the left right here, we wanna have a new column and put associate. And you can put a drop down if you want. So you can click on the carrot, go to edit column type, drop down, and we'll put employee one and employee two. You can add some color right here. Perfect. Hit done and we're good. So now we have a new column and now we need to do the same exact thing that we just did, but for that new column. So we're going to go back here. We're going to change this to column five, change this to column five, change this to column six, change this to column five. Up here, we need to change this to column four, but then we also added a new column. So we need to change the timestamp location by one as well. We'll change completed to column 13 pending to column 12, the triggers located in column five, and everything is good to go there. So I'm gonna save that. Now, just like last time, we need to add a new column wherever that is. So we'll put associate, combine list to the left, we'll put associate, recurring to the left, we'll put associate, completed tasks to the left, associate. Now over here, if you want to include the associate, you can do that. So let's go ahead and add a new one to the left, and we'll put associate. Now, just like last time, we need to do some edits. Our part task will be good to go since we have the new column already and we updated the app script list. Now on the combined list, you can see right here that we only have the items that are on the task list and everything is missing from the done tab. And that's because you can see right here where call two is not null and call two right now is the associate. There is no associate listed on our completed tasks tab. So that's why nothing's there. If I were to add an associate, then if I go to my combined list, you can see that associate is now there. So if you have any historical data, you have one of two options. One, you can change this from call two to call three. So that way the third column is not null, which is the deadline. But realistically, you want it to always point to the task list, which is call four. So that way it doesn't exclude anything that does not have a deadline, but was completed. The other option is you could assign an associate to every single one of your completed tasks. I don't recommend that, it takes too long, but it's entirely up to you. So that's all good to go now. Everything is good with the summaries. On the recurring tasks, we now have the associate. So let's go ahead and change this dropdown. And this was employee one and employee two. And you can change the colors to whatever you have for the other one. Another thing you can do is drop down from a range. So let's say we want to insert two to the right. And we're going to say roster. And we'll say employee one, employee two. And I'm going to go ahead and change this alternating colors to make it nice and clean. So we'll change this to Q to Q. Hit done, make this nice and small, and then we'll select all of column S, go to the fill, alternating colors, and pick a new color. So we'll say we want this purple color. So now instead of having to do the drop down on every single task that is there, and having update whenever you do employee start, whenever you want to get them out, things like that, you can go here to drop down, drop down from a range, and simply select that range. So I'm gonna go over here, select that range, all the way through the end of column S, so that way it includes everything. And now everything is updated based off of that range. So if I were to go here and put a new one, so employee three, it will automatically be added to that list. You also need to add some color. Now we can do the same thing for the task list. So instead of having it like this, we can go to drop down, drop down from a range, select the four little boxes, click on the data range, go to our recurring tasks, go over to the right and select S2 all the way through the end of column S, hit done. And then that same formatting for whatever you had before and you're good. So now everything is synced up to that one location. Now for the recurring tasks, now the locations have changed for the trigger as well as for the last added dates and stuff. So I'm gonna go back to our app script and go to the recurring. And then right here where it says it's looking for yes in column 11, we need to change that to a 12. And now it's copying columns two through seven. We want this to now be two through eight. And that's because we have a new column in there. And then right here on our task list, we wanted to paste columns one through eight. And then whenever it adds a new task, we wanted to add a timestamp in column 11 of our task list. And we wanted to overwrite the date in column 10, which is the last added date. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And then let's go here and test it out. So we have a bunch that would qualify, but since I'm filming this on a Sunday, it's not allowing it to add during the weekend. If you want to be able to customize all your different types of recurring tasks, check out my recurring task customization video. I'll link it below. But now I can go back to my abstract and click run. If I go to my task list, it should flow through where the deadline is right here. Everything is accurate. Everything's in the right location. And then under task added, it should have that timestamp here. So if it doesn't, that means you've typed in a wrong number, but everything's looking perfect. 
And from there, you can add the new employee or better yet, you should add it on your employee list. So that way, whenever you add the task, it automatically flows through the employee there. All right, so going back to our dashboard, we need to clean up some things. And now since we have a new column, one, we can resize this so that way it's a little bit smaller. And now we need to make sure that we have every single column. So right now on our task list, we have column A, C, D, E. We don't have priority and that's in column F now. And now we have column B. Now, just like last time, things are in the wrong order. And that's because now instead of in column B having the deadline, column C has the deadline. So in the first formula, we need to change it where anything where it says column B now says column C. And that's because the deadline is now there. So I'll change that here. I'll change that here. So now instead of the task list being in column C, now it's in column D. So that part is good. The next thing we need to do is edit the order by. That's because we want to order by the date and then the priority. So now this is in column F and this is in column E. And then same thing down here. This is now in column F and this is in column E. Now if I press enter, it's still messed up. And that's because we don't have all the columns. So I need to adjust this. So I'm going to take out C and put B, then F and then C. And C, remember, is the deadline. That's why we're doing in that order. And we need to add F because the priority doesn't exist. And if you can't remember which column they're in, you can simply go back to the task list and you can see which column each of these titles are correlated with. Now I'm gonna copy this and then go over here and do the same. Now you can see here we have no dates and that's because it cuts off at five columns. So we're gonna change this to six. So now everything is working a lot better. We still have this error down below and that's because there is nothing that has opened. If I were to delete something, go back to my dashboard, you can see that now it's working exactly as it should. But let's say we wanna be able to add a deadline to everything without having that error. What you can do is before the formula, so between the equals and array constraint, we'll put if error, open parentheses, and then after, put a comma, then close parentheses. So if there's an error, then it's going to be blank. If it's not an error, then it's gonna return whatever's there. Now it's important to remember that this is there. That way, if you do have errors, for example, when we were adjusting formulas, if that's already there, then it's not gonna show you any error. It's just gonna be blank. So if that's the case, simply delete that portion of the formula, and then you'll be able to figure out what the error is. Now let's say you wanna add a second calendar to be able to monitor the deadlines for two months instead of one. You can simply select all the columns that contain the calendar, and then say insert eight columns to the right. Now we're going to select columns I through O, copy, select on column Q, and hit paste. I'll put EO month, open parentheses, select the date from the prior calendar, put a zero, and then plus one. And when I do that, it's going to extract the first day of the next month after this. Now you can see that we have some coloration issues and that's because th there's conditional formatting based off of that current month and that's no longer the case. So all we need to do is select a fill color, pick a custom color and we'll select the same color that we had before. Now the middle months are not properly formatted as well. So I'm going to select the first week, which is click paint, select that new week, paint, select that new week, paint, select that new week, paint, and then just keep going all the way down till when you hit the new date. Finally, we just need to click into the calendar, go to format, conditional formatting, now the formula right here, we wanna duplicate it. So we'll click into it, click add another rule. And then since we have September selected, we're going to delete the rain for the previous month. And then we're going to change I to Q. And then we're going to change this month to Q as well. And let's give this a different color. So I'll make this kind of a orange color. Then I'll hit done. Let's give the headers the same coloration that we have for the conditional formatting. So now everything is orange. Now back over on the original calendar, let's go ahead and go back to conditional formatting. And we don't want to apply this formatting to the other range. So I can delete that and hit done and now we're good. So now you can see that all of the different month dates are formatted based off of August. And then over here, it's the same thing, but based off of September. And if I were to double click on this, let's say we want to change this to September 1st instead, this will automatically update based off of October. So it's always one month ahead. And you can do this for as many calendar dates as you want. All right, so that's a bunch of different customizations that you can do to your automated task tracker to personalize it to you. Let me know in the comments if there's any more customizations that you want me to cover that I have not covered in this video. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions and like and comment for more.